بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از دا سیکنڈ لیسن فار فزکس فار کلاس ٹویلو اینڈ آئی ایم یور ٹیچر سعد اینڈ دس از بیسکلی دا سمری آف دا آن لائن کلاس دیٹ یو ٹک ٹو ڈے ایز یو نو دیٹ دا لاسٹ اشرا آف رمضان از ان پروگرس اینڈ دا پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہیڈ پروڈکٹیڈ دیٹ دا لیٹر القدر لائز آن دی آڈ نمبر آن اینی ون آف دی آڈ نمبر نائٹس آف دا لاسٹ اشرا So I request my students to recite this dua frequently in the last ashra especially uh, on the odd numbered nights and the dua is Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afwanni Oh Allah certainly you are most forgiving you love to forgive so forgive me Starting off with electrostatics electrostatics is a branch of physics that studies electric charges at rest and the fields associated with them You have studied electrostatics in chapter uh, in class 10 and this chapter is a continuation of that topic. We'll make an assumption during this chapter that the charges we are studying are point charges. A point charge is a hypothetical charge located at a single point in space. So whatever the magnitude of the charge is, we consider that the charge is a point or a dot. The unit of charge is in coulombs we attach prefixes with it like micro coulomb nano coulomb but whatever the magnitude is uh, for example uh, a circle with zero area is a dot or a point so for our simplicity we consider that the charge we are studying has zero surface area and it is a dot and this is a coulomb law coulomb's law that you studied in class 10 that there's always a force between two charges if uh, the two charges are like charges the force will be the force of repulsion and if they are unlike charges the force will be force of attraction so coulomb's law states that the force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges is directly proportional to the magnitude of the product of the magnitude of the charges and is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them now i'm not saying that the square of distance between the centers the square of distance between them because we're considering point charges and the point charge is its own center so this uh, law uh, resembles the law of gravitation given by newton in which we, the force of attraction between two masses was directly proportional to the product of the masses this is very similar to that so if we combine these two it will be f is proportional to q1 q2 over r square and when we remove the sign of proportionality this k is the constant which is studied in class 10 now k exactly has a value of 8.988 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square but for your simplicity you round off this value as 9 into 10 raised to power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square and the epsilon naught that is used <coughs> is a permittivity of free space and <coughs> it is 8.84 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter square Now what is epsilon not? For example, if you have two charges, one is a positive charge and one is a negative charge. And you studied in class 10, there are that there are electric field lines originating from positive charge and ending at the negative charge. Now there are certain there's certain density of the lines per unit area. You'll study it, it later. in this chapter which is known as flux so there is certain density of the lines these the density of these lines or you can say the number of these lines there are you see if you're using vacuum as a medium between the two charges there will be maximum lines if you use air as a medium between the two charges then the lines will decrease a bit then you use other materials like wood like cotton like asbestos any material and the number of lines will decrease subsequently so you can say that every material gives a different kind of permission 
for electric field lines to pass through them. You call this permission as permittivity. And the permittivity of vacuum is epsilon naught. If you're using any other medium, then we use epsilon r, which is relative permittivity. Right? So k in case of vacuum is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And k for any other medium is, I k call it k med for any other medium is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught epsilon r. So you multiply the relative value of epsilon with epsilon naught. If there is any other medium, then vacuum. <clears throat> now coming to the derivation portion, you studied in class 10 that this is the Coulomb's force between two charges or I can simply say that it is k q1 q2 over r square we can see we are considering that it is a vacuum and uh, we are replacing k1 over 4 pi epsilon naught by k to just sim keep the equation simple so now I consider that I have two charges one is q1 and one is q2 now drawing these charges as circles does not mean they are circles they are point charges so no matter how I draw them, they are still point charges. So there is force applied by charge 1 on charge 2 and there is another force applied by charge 2 on charge 1. So I say that the force applied by charge 1 on charge 2 is F12 and the force applied by charge 2 on charge 1 is F21. Now I am coming to the vector form. This that you studied in class 10 is actually the magnitude of the force right now we're coming to vector form so now as the, the you studied unit vectors in class 11 if I say that the unit vector for from charge 1 to charge 2 is r12 with a cap so a unit vector you know is a vector with uh, magnitude 1 and some direction it denotes the direction and the unit vector from charge 2 to charge 1 is R21. So I say that this force F12 vectorially is using this magnitude K Q1 Q2 over R square into R12 unit vector. Similarly, the char force of charge 2 on charge 1, F21, is K Q1 Q2 over R square. The order in which Q1 and Q2 is, are multiplying does not matter because it is the commutative property of multiplication of scalars. So if it is Q2 Q1 or Q1 Q2, that doesn't matter. What matters is this unit vector, R21. Now you say, see, that both the unit vectors are in opposite direction. If you see here, so I can say R12 unit vector is equal to minus R21 unit vector. So if I replace this R12 by minus R21, this equation will become F12 is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R square into minus R21. What I've done is I've replaced this R12 with minus R21. Now bringing this minus at the start, it will be minus K Q1 Q2 over R square R21 unit vector. Now we see that this is the value of F21, KQ1Q2 over R square R21 unit vector. 
दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ F21 K Q1 Q2 over R square R21. So I put that value F12 vector is equal to minus F21. So now I come to a conclusion after this derivation that both the forces are action and reaction pair. Both the forces are equal and opposite. For example, if you tie a rope. with a wall and you pull the rope there will be a force that you are applying on the wall by pulling the rope and there is a force that the wall is applying on you and both are equal and opposite so this is an action and reaction pair so we have reached a very uh, useful conclusion that the electrostatic force between two charges is action and reaction pair and if we use any other medium than vacuum so F one over four by epsilon naught if this is for vacuum and we are using any other medium then it will be one over four by epsilon naught epsilon R Q one Q two over R square this for for other mediums. That's all for today's lecture.